Hi, Upper Elementary. Welcome to your Sunday Bible lesson. I hope you guys are doing well and really getting into your Bibles and learning and growing. So let's go ahead and open with a prayer. Dear Father, we love you and we thank you for the care that you have for us. We thank you that you are our great King and our loving Father. Help us to serve you and to please you and to serve others and to always look forward to the day that Jesus returns. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So our lesson today in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. If you don't have your Bibles, go ahead and grab them. It's about the day of the Lord. And for some people, the day of the Lord can seem like a really scary thing. But then for other people, those who are saved in Jesus, it can be a really joyful thing. So let's go ahead and grab your, open up your Bibles now. And I'm going to share my screen with you. So when you see an overgrown forest like this, it's kind of dark and, and it's filled with a lot of brush, um, what is the way that it's typically cleared out? It takes a wildfire to clear out all of this brush and overgrowth, doesn't it? So a forest fire, a wildfire can seem like a really scary thing. It purges all of the old decay and overgrowth, but in order for something, for the regrowth to happen, the fire has to burn away all the old in order for the new to come about, doesn't it? And that's a beautiful thing that after a forest fire, when all of the old is burned away, then we see this pure and new growth come in, these beautiful flowers, <clears throat> young trees. And this is one way that we can look at the day of the Lord. And it doesn't maybe seem so scary. While we wait, <laughs> Second Peter chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. Actually, we're going to go back to 8, 13, I think, even. 8 through 13. Okay, so let's read this. Dear friends, here is one thing you must not forget. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. And the Lord is not slow to keep his promise. He is not slow in the way some people understand it. Instead, he is patient with you. He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. Instead, he wants all people to turn away from their sins. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar and fire will destroy everything in them. God will judge the earth and everything done in it. So everything will be destroyed in this way. And what kind of people should you be? You should lead holy and godly lives. Live like this as you look forward to the day of God. Living like this will make the day come more quickly on that day. Fire will destroy the heavens. Its heat will melt everything in them. But we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Godliness will live there. All this is in keeping with God's promise. So when Peter wrote the second letter, Second Peter, he was in prison again. And he was aware that death was coming. Um, Peter warned against false teachers, and soon after his letter was written, Peter was killed in Rome, just as uh, Jesus had predicted would happen in John chapter 21. So some people thought the believers were foolish for thinking that Jesus is coming again. But Peter explained that God is patient, and he wants everyone to trust in Jesus. And at just the right time, Jesus will come again. And we look forward to the day when he creates a new heaven and a new earth. Now, Peter's letter was written nearly 2,000 years ago to believers who were not really that far removed from Jesus's life on earth, just a few decades. Now, today, we still eagerly wait for Jesus's return. 
Why do we want him to come back? Because he's going to destroy evil and suffering. Evil and suffering will be complete and sin will be gone. It will be no more. So while we wait, we're called to use our time on earth as a chance to know Jesus better and to love him and to tell others about him. So again, we've got here in verses eight and nine, dear friends, here is one thing you must not forget. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow to keep his promise. He is not slow in the way some people understand it. Instead, he is patient with you. He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. Instead, he wants all people to turn away from their sins. So Peter had been speaking about God's judgment. And one day God will judge evil. This is what he promises. Some people might think that God is, isn't able to do away with evil. evil. They might ask, why God allows evil to continue even today. And they might even believe that God isn't real because evil is still in the world. And some might even say, if he's a loving God, then why does he allow all of this evil to continue? Maybe they think that God isn't even powerful enough to defeat evil. Well, Peter answers this very simply. He says, God is powerful enough to put an end to evil. And he will put an end to it one day. The only reason he hasn't is because he's being patient. He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. So instead, he's giving us time. He's giving people time, um, a chance to receive his grace and to be saved um, before he punishes wickedness and rebellion and evil. So he's waiting to return to allow people a chance to be saved. So why does it seem that God is slow in sending Jesus back to earth? And how does God show that he is patient? All right, and verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. Fire will destroy everything in them. And God will judge the earth and everything done in it. So I, like a thief in the night. Now Jesus actually used this phrase also in the Gospels in Matthew and Luke. And for all these people who think that God will never bring judgment, that it's never going to happen, they are going to be surprised, shocked. Now, some people try and predict when the end is going to come, and they might be looking for signs, but Jesus already gave us the biggest sign. He returned to heaven, and he promised to return again someday soon. So the end times actually began when Jesus returned to heaven. So we live in the end times. We all know that he's going to come back to put an end to evil and suffering and sin, just like he promised. Now, this thief in a night, when a thief wants to steal something, he doesn't announce it ahead of time, does he? The best thing he can do is to catch people by surprise. That's why he, this, he uses this example. A thief comes in the night and it's the darker, the better, right? So, the more people that are mocking God and the more evil that exists in the world, the darker the world is. And the more, un, the more surprised people will be when Jesus does return. Nobody knows when that's going to happen. So Jesus does want us to be watching and waiting for his return. He gives us this warning, I will return. So one of the things that Jesus told us was that the time just before he would come would be a lot like the time just before the great flood. Do you remember when God saved Noah and his family in the ark? First of all, everyone during that time just kept going about their life as if, as if nothing was going to happen. They kept on eating and drinking 
and living their lives with no concern for God or the future. Well, during that time, Noah preached about the coming flood, but no one would listen. And so they just laughed at Noah and they believed that the world would just go on like it always has. And so they rejected Noah and God, even though they had been warned that this flood was coming. And people in our world really have not changed since then. God's people have been preaching about Jesus for over 2,000 years. That's a lot longer than 120 years. But a lot of people won't listen because they believe that nothing will ever really change and that judgment just won't really come. It's just a myth. Another thing about Noah's time is that the people were very wicked and they did a lot of bad things and disobeyed God and they were mean and violent. And the world today, again, nothing much has changed. So many people still refuse to believe in Jesus. But his second coming will be like a thief in the night. And for those of us who know Jesus, though, we can watch and wait and be excited because we know that he's going to come and evil is going to be wiped away. There we've got our <laughs> the ark and the flood. So do you believe God will put an end to evil and sin one day? And how do we know we are living in the end times? What was the sign that Jesus gave us? What did Jesus say about the date and time of his return? All right, so verses 11 and 12. So everything will be destroyed in this way. And what kind of people should you be? You should lead holy and godly lives. Live like this as you look forward to the day of God. Living like this will make the day come more quickly. So we know that God will destroy the earth and the heavens, and this noise of explosion is going to be great. All of the material in the universe will melt, and the only thing we can maybe com even come close to comparing it to is maybe like a nuclear bomb. Everything explodes from the inside out with this intense heat, and there's going to be nothing left, no buildings, no trees, no rocks, no cars, nothing will be left. Um, the earth and all of man's works are going to perish. That's God's promise. However, what will be left? And the answer is believers, those who love and obey Jesus and have been saved by him. So Peter asks us, this great question. He says, what kind of person should we be? The kind of people we should be is the kind that are looking forward to the day of the Lord and those who lead holy and godly lives. We should live like we're not a part of this world, that we're um, visitors or pilgrims and foreigners in this world, it should not become our home because heaven is our true home. So in the meantime, we just don't hide away. We're told to watch, we're told to wait, and we're told to serve God and to serve others, right? So we know the world has nothing to offer that is worth rejecting God's gift of salvation and his love. There's nothing in this world that even compares to that. So live like the things of this world smell like smoke, okay? We should be the kind of people who are looking for a city, not made by man, but whose maker is God. What are some things we can do while we wait for Jesus to return? So these last couple of verses, on that day, fire will destroy the heavens, its heat will melt everything in them, but we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Godliness will live there, and all this is in keeping with God's promise. There are a lot of beautiful places on this planet all over for us to see. So it's really hard to imagine what God has in store for us. 
this new creation. Once the old and the decay and death and evil are wiped away and he makes all things new and pure and beautiful and right again, it's something, it's a promise that we can look forward to and be excited about. So why is Jesus's return important to believers? And why can we be glad when Jesus returns? And what do you personally need to do to prepare for Jesus's return? And your extra credit. Skip ahead and read 2 Peter verse th or chapter 3, verse 18. And what else can we do while we wait for Jesus? What does this verse tell you? All right. You remember the riser videos that we've done? I've got another one for you. This is your extra credit verse, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. If you go to YouTube and Google risers, 2 Peter 3.18, you should find this video, Grow in the Grace, or Glory, Glory, Glory. It's R-I-Z-E-R-S. Make sure you get the Z. We group the risers. It's great. It's great for memorizing scripture. And then we have another Bible project video, 2 Peter, an overview. So Google Bible project, 2 Peter. You'll see the, the streaming channel here. Find Second Peter. And that's not all. We have worksheets for you um, over our scriptures to help you dig into them a little bit more. And that is everything. That's what I've got. <laughs> all right. You guys, don't be afraid of the day of the Lord. Um, if you're secure in Jesus and you know you're saved by him, then it's something that we can be excited about knowing that evil is only temporary and suffering and sin are only temporary and someday they're going to be gone. So that's something we can look forward to. All right. I love you guys. Um, take care. We'll see you soon.